I want to actually uh, further go to illustrations and if you indulge me just by staying true to message in terms of some of what we're doing on uh, transport in again to illustrate that we're not just involved in individual projects we are involved in a program strategically to achieve certain outcomes. And we said a little over three years ago that we had four priorities in transport in the state. And that was to make out a harder work, to work on the North-South Corridor, to deal with regional freight and to uh, grapple with this complex issue of public transport, which is where I'll leave my thoughts as we progress through these comments. And so three years down the track, we've largely dealt with all the issues associated with Outer Harbour. We've deepened the channel, we've uh, been involved with Dubai ports for extensions to the container terminal, more to come. There's a new grain terminal with ABB grain, there's a new grain wall being built. We put another 20 or so million into upgrading the corridor. We've had the um, first stage of the uh, Port River Expressway complete and we opened on August the 1st the uh, new bridges, road and rail bridges over the Port River. Over $500 million worth of infrastructure, public and private money, Commonwealth and state money, all working towards the same objective to get access to our harbour and make our harbour work as a port for South Australians. Our second priority, the North-South Corridor. Um, we said that this is something that needs attention. The road, uh, RAA groups and other road groups have supported us. And so what we have is some 30 intersections along that corridor that need attention. We have started with the intersection known as South Road Anzac Highway, and if you can't read the detail, you can see why we started with it, because it's the one that reaches to the top of the page. That's the delays with each of the intersections along the South Road corridor. You can see why we started with Anzac Highway. And we are now well advanced on the Anzac Highway underpass. We will be returning traffic to the full width of Anzac Highway over the next week or so. We'll have traffic going through the new underpass sometime mid next year and uh, we'll have the project completed towards the end of next year. Removing, not entirely, but reducing delays um, at one of our significant intersections, but it's the start of a program. We have a lot more to do. We are also putting some funds into taking the tram line over South Road. This is not strictly on South Road, in fact it's not even on South Road, most of you would know that, but I put it here because it's just a multi award winning project. We finished and opened this year uh, and we keep winning awards and I just want to keep bragging about it, so it's a good one to have. Uh, on the agenda, on time, on budget, it's got the Civil Constructors State and National Awards, the Project Manager State Award, the uh, First, uh, the high commendation of the Project Manager's National Award, which means we're the first loser. And uh, we've got the Engineer State Awards and the Engineer's National Awards are about two weeks away. But regional freight was our third priority and Northern Expressway is our biggest road project ever. Um, we have that to link with the Northern Connector and um, planning that for mid next decade. And uh, Sturt Highway upgrade, we're getting good prices, we're pushing further up the corridor, we'll have a duplicated road somewhere near Nuri Ukta by the time we ran out of money uh, and that's gone further than we envisaged. We linked with some work we've done with the Commonwealth Government, the private sector rail operator, the uh, farmers who pay a levy to uh, upgrade rail to get um, competition and keep the rail running as a uh, source to um, take grain from farm site to uh, Port Lincoln and uh, we've got similar things on the go in the South East depends a bit on the future of the pulp mill and uh, the Spencer Gold Ferry. We all said he wouldn't make it happen. Uh, here he is over 12 months of services and we have a new road um, by way of sea uh, across the, uh, the Gulf which is providing good service for those who want access to Air Peninsula. And then the fourth priority and the one that's more relevant and pertinent to where we are tonight is public transport. And we said three and a half years ago it was a priority. And, uh, we started with a project which is to extend the tram through the city of Adelaide. You would all be aware how much flack we got. We wore during that period. It was going to destroy King William Street. Um, we wouldn't be able to drive through King William Street. It would uh, destroy the appearance because the tram line to nowhere, no one would use it. You've heard it all. Premier actually made the observation. He was surprised, I think, at um, how much flack he got on street corners with this project. Of course we built it, 
Uh, we delivered it on time in budget. Adelaide didn't stop during the process. We built it mainly over six weekends. Um, the criticism now is the, uh, you can't get on the trains. Uh, they're too full and we need to buy more trains. You just can't buy them off the shelf we're working on. Um, but it is a demonstration that Adelaide will vote at their feet and use public transport if we make it attractive enough and it takes people to where they want to go. And so that led to the announcement of this year's budget of $2 billion investment in public transport over the next 10 years. And if I was to say to you that over the next 10 years on an operating rail line that we will completely rebuild our rail tracks because quite frankly our rail lines are operating on sleepers installed in the 1960s that have 20 year life. And so you may question why we actually have speed limits and have time with uh, running, a difficulty with running on time. We need to rebuild our rail tracks. Outer Harbour is the only decent one we have. So we need to rebuild the Belair Line and the Lunga Line and the Gawler Line uh, to put a decent sub-base on our public transport system. If I said that that was all we were doing over the next 10 years, that's a huge logistics exercise. But if I said that instead of doing that, we were going to standardise our gauge and go from broad gauge to standard gauge rail services in an operating rail environment, and we'll do that over 10 years, that too would be a huge logistics exercise. But if I said we're going to go from diesel rolling stock to electric rolling stock and run an electrified system in the next 10 years, that would be a huge logistics exercise. If I said we needed to buy a whole new fleet of new rail cars, do we buy um, electric standard gauge or do we buy something that operates on what we currently have in the interim? There's a huge logistics exercise there and if I said we were going to completely rebuild our rail maintenance facilities over this time, again another huge logistics exercise. Five programs we're running in parallel over the next 10 years. We have a huge task ahead of us to deliver that. So we are putting out tracks on concrete sleepers. We are standardising the system, we are electrifying the rail. Um, uh, we expect that we will get funds to extend our season uh, during this same time frame. That's dependent on Commonwealth programs that the Premier and Minister announced. But that's um, high on our agenda. Uh, new rolling stock, tram line extension, running down to the entertainment centre in the first instance, but also opening up opportunities for a coast-to-coast -coast run of the tram line from Glenelg through the city down to 